four points of view from four very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way. <laughs> Did your phone go off? Oh, God. <laughs> Listen, we are as live as live can be here, and we appreciate you tuning in along with Sean Grugel, Brian Bob, Hollywood Q, I'm Jason Klaus, and we have a lot to talk about here tonight. Gentlemen, we're coming out of a historic WrestleMania season. I mean, we can talk about all day long about all the things that went down over the course of that, uh, that big two-night event here a couple of weeks back, but that's what the podcast feed is for, and they're all in the archives, so check it out at PFC Entertainment Network. With that, we have a brand new era here in world wrestling entertainment, and it is really starting to shape not just WWE, but you're starting to see the trickle effect on full display on how this is going to affect the other companies that are jockeying for position, and right now, it seems like, you know, a lot of the attention, you know, as we come out of, of WrestleMania is the WWE draft. Now, this is something that people have an opinion on one way or the other. They, they either like it or they don't like it. Some people would like to see the entire roster be under one umbrella and just, uh, just have the different storylines on the shows or what have you. But uh, at the same time, this is where we really have an opportunity to shake it up, as it were, to mix up the draft, the roster, get new matches, new stars on the horizon here. Q, I'll start with you. Where are you at with the draft? Because this thing will kick off on April the 26th on SmackDown in Cincinnati, and then we they will conclude it on, on that next Monday, the 29th in Kansas City. So oh, overall, where are you at on the whole concept of the draft? I'm cool with it. I'm glad they moved it up to uh, around this time, like right after WrestleMania is the best time to do it. Right. Because I know when the old wrinkly guy was in charge, uh, <laughs> he did it in October, which like right before Survivor Series, which really didn't make sense because they were doing the Survivor Series uh, war brand warfare thing. Yeah. And you got people switching brands and all of a sudden they're loyal to that brand, talking about don't mess with my brand. and all this. <laughs> oh, It's just a bunch of craziness, man. So I'm glad that they moved it to this date here in, uh, in, in, in April. I mean, it's a new era. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm full of pizza. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm full. I got, uh, I, I, got, I got a little bit of gas in my gas tank, man. I'm ready to go, man. Let's, let's, let's get this thing fired up. Well, I can tell you're fired up. <laughs> and like, but, I mean, as animated as you are, it, it doesn't get it, carbs a lot. It really <laughs> is a thing where, you know, this is how a, the, a lot of wrestling fans are, are, are feeling. Like, this is what we have been waiting for and for the longest time and i put a teaser out out uh, yesterday i think it was that you know why was wrestlemania why will this day go down or this event go down as the biggest night literally in the history of the business it's not just what happened in the ring it's not just who walked out with new titles and whatnot because there was a ton of new champions yeah. that have been crowned only one champion remains in place from the previous era if you were because it is on this show that the declaration was made we are in a new era here in not just the wwe but all of professional wrestling with triple h full on full display head and head and shoulders above in charge and now he has almost like an open playing field like he is the he has all these pieces. Where does he play with them? Now, Brian, oh, yeah. you raised your hand when I alluded to the fact that there were some people that don't like the draft concept. I don't like the fact that 
there's no real rule set to the draft thing. It's just whatever they really want to do. So you'll see factions get drafted as whole factions. You'll get some people drafted individually from factions. It doesn't make sense. Like if they actually like isolated, made it like the thing, and actually had rules to it, I maybe I would go along with it. But I'm like, I'd rather just see an open format where everyone got the chance to wrestle everybody. I mean, we basically saw it because you had so many people holding multiple titles. They were showing up on multiple shows anyways. Right. So, I mean, what's the point? Like, just open it up. I get that they want to be able to focus some attention on the people that are not holding belts, so you got to make room for them as well. But, dude, that, that can be done. They've done that for years. Right. And don't forget, the one person that retained her belt is now no longer holding that belt. Well, there is one other title holder that remains. Oh, I took Rhea Ripley into consideration, and we're going to talk about her in, in a moment. But, Sean, we have seen the drafts over the last few years here, you know, between Raw and SmackDown, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Off the top of your head, has there ever been a guy that has really benefited from s switching one brand to the other? And is there anybody on the roster right now that is really just a doorstep away from a huge opportunity and moving brands would be that catalyst? Man, I wasn't expecting that question from you. <laughs> that's a great I'm like, question. That's a, I'm like, oh, man, I'm glad that wasn't me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, look, I... I'm just going to put it to you like this. The, the draft to me is a cute concept. And what I mean by cute is, is it plays to what the fans want to see. But it's not really what the company's going to do. Because let's face it, if you have a real draft, let's say I want to draft Refrigerator Perry from the Chicago Bears over to Detroit. That doesn't mean two weeks later he can go, well, hell, I'm going to go play back for the Bears for this week, and maybe next week I'll go back to the Lions. You know, the, if I'm kind of like with Brian here. If you're going to keep the concept of a draft, then you got to have the rules. You know, maybe, maybe Paul Heyman puts out money to bring someone over to the Raw side or the SmackDown side. Mm -hmm. You create a storyline like that. But to just have people arbitrarily jump the line to different shows, it's it's like playing chess, but playing for the other side too. It right. doesn't matter what you're doing. As far as a person jumping the draft, I think The Miz benefited from it. Our truth uh, being live on SmackDown, I think he's doing, or on Raw, is doing some of his best work ever. But did the draft have anything to do with it? No, it was creative and the writers deciding to put these people in the right places at the right time. It's one of those things where we sit here and we're like, okay, the, they're going to shake up the roster. We're going to get new rivalries, new matchups, which is, you know, it keeps things fresh. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, what, who made the biggest splash on a draft switching from one brand to the other? And the first one that comes to mind is John Cena in, in 2005. He was on SmackDown for the longest time. He won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 21 and then got drafted to Raw, and that's where he was at for the longest time. But that splash, because there was he was established as a SmackDown guy. Right. And I, I feel like if they are going to do this draft and they are going to be brand exclusive, and much like you guys are saying, keep it brand exclusive. Because right. otherwise, there is no point. Now, you're going to have to have a little bit of wiggle room in case of injury, they're on the road, house shows, th things of this nature. Look, I understand that. But at the same time, you have to like treat it like it's an actual sport, like a, a, a trade would be done between right. baseball teams, football teams, what have you. I will send you our truth and the Miz, but I want Ivar and I want this guy and I want that guy and maybe this girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, like actually do it in a real presentation. Why would you say Ivar? I don't know. It was the first <laughs> name that just whoa, whoa, popped up. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping actually uh, that now that Triple H has taken taken control, that he will actually do things different from what the old man was doing. Yeah. Because 
I, I honestly believe that Vince will forget who's on what brand. Dude, that's been legit. <laughs> that, I have listened to a few podcasts that that was alluded to yes. the last few years. That's why, I mean, he had been known for changing the scripts, yep. or, you know, at, I mean, within 10 minutes of going live because he forgot what the hell he was doing. Yeah. He forgot what director. They're like, well, Vince, didn't you say we were going to take the story in this? Oh, well, God, that about over that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he That's forgot. exactly how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm hoping they, they put a stop to is main roster guys going back down to NXT. You brought up Ivar. What did we see last week? All of a sudden, Ivar's like a motorcycle dude, you know, confronting. I forget who he confronted on NXT, did, yeah. but all of a sudden, he's talking proper English. He's not a Viking anymore. Oh, it was... Uh, Oba. Oba. Yeah. Oba was Femi. It? Oba Femi. Oba Femi, yep. And, uh, no, it wasn't that. It was the other, the country boy that just broke up with his partner. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. I forgot his name. Anyway, he told, <laughs> me, yeah. he told him, go put Jensen. on your Viking Jensen. makeup, yeah. you know. So he, he, they're crossing the lines, you know. In, in my opinion, if you're gonna be a Viking, you're you're a Viking. You're not going back to NXT. Right. I think right. it is kind of cool though, calling up the <laughs> NXT to the main <laughs> roster, just not in reverse. I could just see Sean walking into like an Applebee's and be mad because he doesn't see the guy that's Viking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be. <laughs> but, but, at, but at the same time, Sean, so. and and we'll correlate this with baseball. If you know, as a as a, a legit sport example, if you have a guy like an Ivar, you have s somebody that's not r really firing on all s cylinders on the main roster, much like you would have. You know, a pitcher <laughs> is not doing well on the mound. They will send him back down to the minors and get him more practice or so, some other form of training, and then they call another guy up in his place. Could that work in this environment with Raw and SmackDown and incorporating NXT as a true, for the lack of a better term, like a triple A type of organization? That, I think it worked for Mandy Rose. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> thing, the thing of it is, man, is like NXT is like a feeder thing. A That's, they, they, they call it a, 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 a training school, right. you know? So why are you sending these guys back down to training? If you're going to do that, all you're doing, like, look what's happened to Baron Corbin. Now, what's going to happen with Baron Corbin since Braun Breaker got called up and he's he's still wallowing around in NXT? Oh, it does guy. nothing for these people's careers because they've already been seen on the main roster. Fair point. I mean, I'm, I, I'm okay with uh, them including NXT in a draft for now because uh, they got a major television deal, the CW, so you, you kind of need to really spice that brand up. You know, with all with all the TV right deals that have been in the in the headlines, WWE Raw goes to Netflix, and AEW is trying to se secure a new deal with Warner Brothers and, and and all this stuff. The NXT deal with CW does not get mentioned, and it's because it's I guess because it's perceived as a lower uh, level network, but. It's a network, nonetheless. Yeah. This is a new opportunity, a new demographic of people that have that on their TV providers. So you have the potential of growing that brand. Yeah. And that's something that nobody is really talking about. What is that TV deal? T taking them off the USA Network and putting them on the CW, it, you know, a network television you know, property, is this going to be beneficial f for them? I think so for trying to get new casual observers. What what do you think so, Brian? Or oh, no? yeah, for sure. I think we got to lose the idea of it being like a training ground and like you said, more of a triple A where you could pop people back down, let them work on things that they're missing, jump back up. <laughs> <laughs> but like when we said about Baron Corbin, like I couldn't stand Baron Corbin. The only time I've actually ever cheered for Corbin is when you just joined with Braun Breaker and became Wolf Dogs. Like, that was the most exciting <laughs> I've ever had fun time watching Baron Corbin. And I, now, I'm a, like you said, I don't know what's going to happen to him now, but who knows? Uh, but at least he had that one moment. Right. He got a belt out of it for a little while. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, we talk about the draft. We talk about the roster of talent in WWE. And we had kind of alluded to all the different title changes that took place at most of them happened at wrestlemania C coming out of wrestlemania weekend only two titles two champions had won their titles 
in the previous administration before the declaration of this brand new era in which Paul Levesque is in firm control. One was Rhea Ripley, the world, uh, the world champion for Monday Night Raw. She just had to vacate her title because of an injury and you know they were incorporating Liv Morgan into all this and that's great and everything. But the one guy that remains the champion, the one title holder <laughs> that's still intact from the previous administration, and like this was on nobody's bingo card, Logan Paul, the United States champion. I say that, and on the surface, you're like, man, of all people, this guy? But Hollywood, it's it's got to be him, right? Well, I like Logan Paul, man. <laughs> Prime time. He's, he's, he's man... Out of all the celebrities, man, he has put in, he's putting in the work. I don't know if anybody's seen the interview he did. Uh, I think he did like a self-recorded interview where he said that wrestling for WWE is harder than uh, boxing Mayweather. Yep. Really? Yeah, yeah. And he explained it. He broke it down why and everything. And I was like, you know what? I can respect that. He, he, he's, he's done both. So I can respect that. So uh, just seeing the work that he put in and, him on promos, he's, he's, he can be that irritating heel that you just got to boo. But then when he's in the ring, man, he's just like pulling off move after move after move. And he's looking like a natural, man. He's taking bumps like a pro. This guy got it, man. He's, he's like a total package, man. And he's got the size. I mean, and he's got the look. He's got the presentation. He's got prime. What about his look do you like? <laughs> he's a very <laughs> handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, we're, obviously Logan <laughs> Paul is going to be a, one of those guys that we keep an eye on, you know, moving forward here in post WrestleMania, going into, you know, they got a lot of big events that are, that are coming up. Backlash is going to be in Paris, and uh, you know, Money in the Bank is in Toronto. Like, there's a lot of big events that are, that are coming up here, and when you know it, the PLEs are going to have his prime logo right in the middle of the ring, which if you saw WrestleMania, for me, it was a distraction, but you know, I'm old school like that. Let's, uh, let's move on, and you can join the conversation too, 810-331-2829, call in the show, and if you have a prediction or you see the draft going one way or the other, or if you want to voice your opinion on the WWE draft, is it a good idea, is it not a good idea? The number is at the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to call in. Um, let's let's kind of shift gears here, gentlemen, because the the other big news source that uh, made headlines coming out of R WrestleMania weekend was the decision and the announcement by Tony Khan that he was going to air the backstage <laughs> footage from the fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry uh, that took place at Wembley Stadium. A lot of speculation. Uh, about what went down backstage. You got a, ton, a, a Tony Khan's version of it in which he he came right out and said, look, my life was in danger, and I was threatened and all this stuff. And you, then you got other uh, people's point of view until nobody was allowed to talk about it. Until CM Punk comes on um, the MMA hour and just push, puts it all out there for from his perspective. Well, in retaliation, and Sean, I'm going to get your take on this first. Um, Tony Khan come out, and he's like, hey, we're going to show the footage and show what really happened. And leading into the days between his announcement and when they did air the footage, there was a lot of chatter online. Is this going to be a good idea? What if the footage shows or backs up CM Punk's version of the story and it's kind of what happened, right? Kind of is. I mean, it was from Punk's point of view. Uh, Perry didn't attack him first. You know, uh, he actually attacked Perry. Actually, he showed what, what, what a wimp he really is, CM Punk did. I mean, waiting for Jack Perry to straighten out his hair and then attack Jack Perry himself. Uh, it was a bad move on, on Tony Khan's part, showing it on his television show. I think it should have been released uh, via the internet, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, you can see that with Tony Schiavone's face. I don't care what Tony Schiavone is saying right now that he was trying to add heat to the Bucks. You can see on his face he was disappointed in the fact that this stuff was shown. Um, but uh, all it did, 
I think was who I don't know who used the term, but they said it was the finger poke of doom for AEW, and yeah. I I thoroughly agree with that at this point because that was a sometimes you shoot for the three and you nail it. Sometimes you shoot for the three and it's an air ball. This was just chucked right into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well man. said. Well said. What a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal analogy. Q, this, this was damning for all elite wrestling on several accounts. Not only for Tony Khan personally, because look, he's, he's had a history, and I'm not, we're not sitting here to just kind of poo-poo all over Tony Khan. You know, the guy has his place. He's doing what, what he's doing. I understand that. But he has a history at this point of coming up with, we have a major announcement. And, like, oh, it man. gets everybody all excited. Everybody's all, like, on the edge of their seat. Who is it going to be? What's happening? Where are they going? This and the other thing. And it winds up being nothing, right? So the announcement that he's going to air this footage and they, have, and they subsequently show the footage and... There's pictures of Tony Sh Shavani's face, you know, head head buried, and I heard his thing. Well, I'm just trying to add to the storyline or whatever. The young bucks are trying to, um, t you know, kind of tie into that with their match with FTR and, and and all this stuff. But we got to look at the reality of the situation and how this thing was was received in by in, in real life in real time by real fans and other people within the business. Is this something that, in your view, much like Sean was saying, uh, this, is going to be, this is going to be hard to overcome. This is going to be hard to rebound from within a, a relatively respectable amount of time, in my view. Where are you on, where are you at on this? Can they bounce back from this? Not much. Not there's not really no bounce. I mean, when that ball goes into the crowd, I mean, it's not gonna bounce on anything. But uh, you know, people are gonna catch it. So, it's, <laughs> but uh, this this is like you know, I don't think AEW is going anywhere. But they're not gonna get to the heights that they want to get to because of some of the actions of the friend boss. You know. He's not the final boss. He's the friendly <laughs> boss. He's, he's the guy that just, he's the fan out there. And, you know, that's fine. That's, he want to be the fan. He's, he's a young guy, you know, a young guy with a lot of money that got a lot of people that he grew up watching on his roster. He's a big fan. That's fine. But if he's going to just continue to be a fan when he's sitting in his chair calling, trying to call shots, then he need to get somebody else in that chair. I mean, it's 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 like me being friends with my children, knowing that they're acting up and they need that father figure to actually put them into the putting them into place. And I can't do that because I'm being their friend. That's what Tony is to his roster. He's he's like another member of the roster. You know, he's just pretty much the figurehead. It's a good way of putting it. Now, Brian. With so much upheaval going on around AEW right now, and, you, and I have to agree with, with Q here, AEW is not going anywhere. I, we're not saying they're on borrow time and they'll be done by, by the end of the year. That's not reality. They are going to be very much around. But I feel like with, with this, with so, so much upheaval r right now and so much scrutiny around AEW, now is going to be the time for another independent pr promotion to really f focus, zero in on them, and f figure out what's going right, what's going wrong. Is there another organization right now that could eclipse AEW as the number two uh, pr promotion in the United States? There's two that jump out that could really make a name for themselves. Well, may maybe three. Um, TNA, obviously. Yep. Um, MLW and the NWA. One and of Glow, huh? And Glow. Do you really think Glow would be a substantial number two? <laughs> I, I watch. <laughs> I told you there was a time I came home and it was on my TV, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, "Well, this is really cool." <laughs> I sat there for a little bit, but now I think TNA would be the big one. Um, 
I think some of the other two, it would take some bigger names to join them to kind of make them pop a little bit. But I, 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 for, personally, I'd rather watch TNA now than AEW. Well, it makes you wonder how many other, other people are starting to switch to you know your, your TNA, MLW, just because they're tired of all, all the other crap that's being yeah. th thrown at this. I'd like to see Billy Corrigan team up with TNA. Yeah. And then go to take over AEW because there's so much talent between Impact and NWA right now. Uh, and the roster still wouldn't be as full as AEW, and yeah. they could do a lot of damage. Right. Well, you know, we we look. You you guys both. You guys have made mention of roster talent big name stars and I'm looking at a list here gentlemen and some of the biggest names in WWE right now their contracts are up for either renewal or they're going to expire at some point before the end of this year I mean we're talking former world champions we're talking main event players here we're talking like Drew McIntyre a lot of speculation about McIntyre going into Wrestlemania with his contract situation and at <clears> this point he has not signed a new deal with WWE and with everything that went down at Wrestlemania with him it made you wonder if the, if that was just like a consolation prize hey we got you here you, you you get your win but then Damian Priest is cashing in money in the bank and here we are he had his live event moment but <laughs> five minutes later it's over right it's over um the power couple of Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins uh Rick, Ricochet Inder Mahal the uh all three members of the New Day Randy Orton uh Kevin Owens and Finn Balor of these lists, of this list, of these names, who's the one guy or the two guys that WWE has to make a priority and lock down for another long-term deal? Sean, we'll start with you. I'm going to say every single one of them except for Ricochet and Jinder Mahal. I mean, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, they are the power couple. Their, their story's not done yet. You still got Seth and CM Punk. Drew McIntyre, you still got him and CM Punk. Um, and so. Ke Kevin Owens... I mean, he, I don't, I don't know, man. He just kind of seems, maybe he doesn't need to be signed right back right away because he's just kind of wallowing in obscurity right now. But Randy Orton with his comeback, he's bigger than I think he's been in years. So they're not going to let him go either. What about you, Brian? Jinder Mahal is the only one that strikes out on that list that I'd be like, yeah, you can go wherever you want. But uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Ricochet, but. I would not be surprised if they don't throw that speed belt on him. I know he's still in the, the but it's down to four people. Yeah. I think that would be him. I'd like to see Becky go, but that's not going to happen. Seth sticking around. Drew, I think they'd be foolish to let him go. He could be a star for sure somewhere else. Um, yeah. Ooh. Well, let's, uh, we, we do have a, oh. I guess we don't. Okay. Psych! <laughs> it's not able fools. Come on. Um, I, I could see Finn going somewhere else. I think yeah. he's kind of lost in the whole Judgment Day thing. But I, I for the most part, the only one I'd let, I, Jinder Mahal, I'd be like, go away, Becky. Go away. But that's more a personal thing. I think they should probably keep Becky. You need the women talent that they have. But What about you, Q? If you if you were gonna lock down somebody, who's who's it gonna be? Honestly, I can see everyone on that list being offered a contract, but uh, as far as like taking it, the one person I can see actually dipping their toe out there in free agents is somebody that actually done it before, and that's Drew McIntyre. Mm -hmm. I can see him doing it because he's been a success outside of WWE. A lot of these other guys, Seth, he's 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 a lifer. He's not going anywhere. Be Becky's not going anywhere. Ricochet, <coughs> excuse me, Ricochet. I feel the same way when I start <laughs> talking about Ricochet. <laughs> I mean, he, he's got ties to his wife. He's not going anywhere. Uh, Natalia, she's got ties to uh, uh, Tyson Kidd, who's mm -hmm. one of the best producers they got. Um, match quality wise, not going anywhere. 
All right, well, we have a call here Hello. live on the air. Right. Welcome to Fatal 4-Way. I think our car warranty is about up. Is, uh, are, you, are you with us? Hi. Can you hear us? I, I, can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh. Okay, I think we're having some sort I, I, Can you hear me? There yeah. you are. All right. Hi. Welcome to the show. Who are we talking to? Ah, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. You're talking to Will Nerona. Ha, ha, ha. Sir Will. Will. <laughs> What's going on, Big Will? Whoa. Are you telling him <laughs> ab ab about the... Uh, What's the going on, fellas? I love the talk. I love you guys. Well, we love you, Thank man. You. We miss you, Will. Yeah. Do you, are you, can you hear us okay? Miss you guys too, man. I, <laughs> I love the wrestling right talk. You need, to, you need to take off that horrible Michigan State, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm listen, <laughs> I'm going to reserve my comments for off the air here because I don't want to get thrown off the air. So we'll just leave it at that. So good to hear your voice, man, and we appreciate you uh, taking time out to call in to the show. Is there an aspect? I, I, I know you're an old school r wrestling fan. Are you paying attention to the current product? Is there anything that we've talked about here that, that stands out? Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely paying attention to you guys. My only question is, what do you guys think and who do you guys think is like the Hogan of today or the premier standout? Ew, gross. Wow. Don't make us say it. Oh, uh, listen. Um, <laughs> the way they have it booked is that the, the easy answer would be Cody Rhodes. <laughs> However, I, none of us can buy into that. <laughs> um I don't know. For me, at this point, it's still Ro Ro uh, Roman Reigns. Even though he's not the <laughs> champion, um, I feel like he really is, the st in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong here, he is the standard bearer at this point, even without the undisputed title, because we're starting to see, gentlemen, the fanfare for Cody Rhodes is starting to dip a little bit on, on social media. Would, have, have, have you seen this? A little bit. Yeah, I have. Uh Time will tell. Uh, I still want to. I still want to. You know, put a little bit more time into it. I don't want to quickly write him off. I'm not the biggest Cody fan, but uh, I'm not going to write him off yet. I'm also not going to call him Hogan yet. So it's kind of like up in the air for me. Who is really the uh, right now? I'm, I'm giving it to Triple H. It's his <laughs> era. <laughs> it's his era. Triple H is the man. Well. Anybody for... Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I like you said, Roman probably closest resembles that, especially with the long run. Um, All right. I mean, yeah. I mean, if if they would have kept going on that heat that L.A. Knight had and pushed him, there would have been a possibility, but he's cooled off so much. Um, yeah, no. I would have to go with Roman. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> I know this kills you. We we all we all know, we all know it's Dusty Sun right now. But I think in a few years, and you you guys are probably gonna reach over the table and slap me. Ricochet. Keep your eye on Logan Paul. I, I almost said his name too. He's uh. That that guy right now, he's the best heel going. But once he turns babyface, once they give him oh, a reason, oh, oh my god! <laughs> once they give him a reason, I mean, think about it. He's a social media superstar. He's you know, you're what United States champion right yeah. now. He's the biggest heel going. He's got his company logo in the middle of the ring. Once he turns babyface, I think that crowd is going to rally behind him, and you're going to see one of the biggest pops when he be, when he becomes he world heavyweight well. champion. I am with you. I don't think you As you were sitting there saying that, I'm like, I don't know <clears> if I can get face. behind this guy. Because yeah. play, he plays the heel role so well. But I the feel like the only that's challenge who to him for really heel is. would be Dominic. 
I think Dominic is still the biggest heel. Oh, man, that's a good one, too. Do- yeah, I mean, and I could see Dominic going face. He's the only one I could see making that flip. And Yeah. You just got to give Logan Paul reason to flip face. Yeah, I do. And it's going to take a few years, but. I, I got to agree with Mr. Balt there. sir will we appreciate you so much for tuning in to the show brother and uh we need to get together here real real soon i guess he doesn't want to i think there's a delay i appreciate you guys having me on real quick miss you guys love you guys and keep talking man good talking to you will all right brother we we will talk to you very very soon Sir Will calling into the show. That was a fun, fun su- su- surprise. Great Listen. question, too. Yeah, great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, what we're going to do right now is we are going to run a quick timeout, and we will be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV right after this. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. Welcome back to the Fatal 4-Way Live here on ONTV with Sean Grugel, Brian Boff, Hollywood Q. I'm Jason Klaus, and we have talked about a lot of different aspects here tonight, and we're not done yet. Uh, but before we get into the next uh, course of action here, our next piece of business, uh, we invite you to call into the show at 810-331-2829, or if you are online and you can communicate through the Orion ONTV Facebook page and the live chat happening there. If you have a question, uh, our esteemed uh, pr- producer over here will uh, bring wow, it. Wow, got to <laughs> <gotta> promote it. <laughs> yeah, he's got a producer credit. <laughs> so uh, he will read it on there. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it. But before we get to all that, Sean, you have the Indie Roundup for, for this week, my friend. Indie yep. Roundup. <laughs> I like my theme song. <laughs> Let me put on my old man glasses here because they aren't. Oh, you know what? I grabbed the wrong glasses. Those are my good reading or my good seeing glasses. So. <laughs> uh, my eyes are so bad I couldn't tell my glasses apart. But <laughs> let, let's get into it. On 420 <laughs> at 530 <laughs> doors, 6 p.m. bell time, Imperial Wrestling Entertainment. Pre- 421 National Drug Test Day coming up. (laughs) (laughs) Imperial Wrestling Entertainment presents Spring Showdown at the Artesia Youth Park Center, 1800 South Loxley in Houghton Lake. Your main event is Bill Blackwell and Trevor Stroud versus the mighty Bojack and Dave Weston. They did give a notable name of Stuntman Mike Teehee. And uh, check them out at IWEGladiators.com. Metro Pro Wrestling on 420, 730 bell time. Uh... At the Down River Council of the Arts, it's Maximilian versus Jake Oman. If you know anything about independent wrestling, you know who Jake Oman is. 421, Independence Pro Wrestling, 6 p.m. They present Defiance at the Four Star Theater in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The main event is not advertised, but notable names are Josh Raymond, Anderson Knight, The Human Hype, Jimmy Shawin, Max Morrison. April 21st, Capital Pro Wrestling. They present the Great Lakes Professional Wrestling Showcase. At 3 p.m., main event is Orlando Christopher versus Keith Cream. On Thursday, April on a Thursday, on wow. Thursday. April 25th, Superstar Championship Wrestling at 6 p.m. They present Night School at the Renaissance High School. Notable names are Big Rookie and Chuck Colding. Hmm. 
April 26th, uh, 7 p.m. bell time, Divine Pro Wrestling, a league of their own. It's an all-women's wrestling show wow. at the Livonia Elks Lodge. Uh, that's at 3117 Plymouth Road in Livonia, Michigan. Uh, the notable names on that are Mickey Knuckles and uh, Lizzie and Peyton Blair de Goons. April 27th, XICW presents Can't Stop, Won't Stop at the Premier Event Center, uh, 2400 South Nunley Road in Clinton Township. The main event is Orlando Christopher versus Aaron Ryan, and the notable name is the DBA. Uh, April, I've heard of that guy. Yeah, I've heard of him once or <laughs> twice, too. April 27th, uh, New Edge Pro Wrestling at 7 p.m. Uh, location is 6176 Dipfield Industrial Drive in Waterford, Michigan. Uh, May 3rd, Superior Championship Wrestling, bell time 7 p.m. They present Spring fall Fallout at the Lincoln Park Band Shell, 3240 Ferris Avenue in Lincoln Park. May 23rd, Pure Pro Wrestling. They present Lucha Fiesta at the Vault, 110 Florence Street, Saginaw, Michigan. The main event just says Authentic Lucha Libre as Masked Marvels take center stage in a high-flying main event. Hmm. Mm. May 4th, mark this one on your calendar. Okay. UPW Pro Wrestling. They have a meet and greet that starts at 4 with a bell time of 7. This show is called Marquette Mania. It's a long ways away, but I think it's going to be worth it at the Lakeview Arena. The main event is Joey Avalon against Mr. Anderson. Oh, I'd go check him out. With for notable sure. names Anderson. of Anderson. <laughs> Thank you. Notable names of Jimmy Hart, Gangrel, Mr. Anderson, The Headbangers, Homicide and Hernandez, Madman Fulton, Shockwave the Robot, Rico Rodriguez, and Shark Boy. Uh, the Headbangers. The Headbangers. Thrasher and Mosh. Wow. So I know I, I talked not, I fast. Their names. You can go to the Fatal Four Way <laughs> Facebook. They're all listed there. You can see all these promotions, websites. Go out there. Go support <laughs> independent wrestling because tomorrow's superstars are wrestling in your area today. Absolutely. Wow. A lot of talent there. And uh, we, we certainly encourage you if you are in the area or su support independent pro wrestling because man that's that's where that's where it all starts uh, yeah. now from the independence circuit to wind it up on the mount rushmore mr balf yes <laughs> my god <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm dead. I look like a potato. I am dead. <laughs> this is I'm like looking at you like you're about to do something. And you're like, you just licked my face. You're, you're looking at my huge quadruple chin. Oh my, my God. Very Paul Hammond like right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, oh, we awesome. did not. That's awesome, man. We did not know that was going to be a thing. That was, I like it. That was a real response in real time. My goodness. <laughs> I, I look like I'm already on 420. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Balf, this is your segment. What, uh, yep. what are we doing here this week? Uh, we're going to do yeah. our Mount Rushmore's of our favorite wrestler <laughs> entrances. Oh Not goodness. specific to like a WrestleMania one, but their day-to-day -day entrance. And it's funny because <sighs> I almost put Mr. Anderson on my list. Did you? I did. I do <laughs> like that mic good. drop. Yeah, that was a good one, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I'll go first. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, see, we talked so much about Ivar. I'll get right off the bat. War Raiders. Okay. Nothing better than walking out there and just war, 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 war. War. That pumps me up so much. I wish they would still do that. And if you, the bigger arena's doing it, oh, my God, that would be so cool. Uh, number two on my list, Alistair Black, the... Coming up off the board with all the smoke in the candles. I thought about that one. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. <clears throat> I did avoid, I'm going to say right off the bat, I did avoid the your top ones that I feel like everybody else was going to put. Um, number three, we talked about this when I put them on my list, Sandman. Okay. Oh, yeah. good yeah, one. The Enter Sandman, one of the best songs by Metallica. He's got the beer out there. He's in the fans. The kendo stick or the cigarette, no matter what he's got, he's walking through them. The only problem with that was sometimes it took him so long to get to the ring because right. you had everybody grabbing on him and stuff like that. And then uh, do last it. but not least, still not as long as the Undertaker. <laughs> 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 last but not least, on mine is the New Age Outlaws. Oh, 
Very I good. Like that. I like that. I like that. Hey, if you, you don't like me? my list, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is good because I didn't have any of yours. So That's why I did it? Ours are going to be identical. You wait. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yours. <laughs> my number one is the Boogeyman. Oh, <laughs> good talked one. about it. Yeah, Lo- love yeah. the Boogeyman. Yes. Uh, number two for me is Demolition. I yep. mean, their entrance was basic, but once those heavy metal riffs started, mm-hmm. sent chills up your spine. Uh, number three, might surprise some of you guys, John Morrison. And I know a lot of it had to do with the camera work, him going in slow motion. Slow motion, I was put yeah. that. That's good. Very, very cool entrance. And then number four, similar to yours, but DX. All right. It's my turn. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, my first one, Big Van Vader, when he had the yes, when he had the Mastodon on the Mastodon helmet, with the little smoke effects coming out of it. That's a good one. Number two, the Brood. Very good one. I almost had it on mine. Yep. Number three, the original Wyatt family. Oh, good one. Yes. Had it on my list too. <laughs> and then number four is a guy that just cannot work for nothing. But I had to put it on here for his entrance, Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see Goldberg, and I'm, I, I get it. If you're I a fan of Sparklers. Yeah, yeah. listen. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that go again? <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm going to go with The Undertaker. And it's not just R- WrestleMania. It's any time you heard the gong. And yeah. the purple lights and the smoke and the lightning and all we that. We saw that Sunday. Yeah. 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 Big uh, reaction. Huge. Brood was was on my list because the, the whole fire, you know, c- coming up through the fire yeah. thing. Very Not the very goblet of blood and spitting it out Triple H style. And no, as soon as he gets back, I, he's just covered in blood. And you had to wrestle him. Like, that was great. Yeah. Oh, the whole presentation. It was a very, it was the music was creepy as hell. Yeah, too. I love so, that yeah. music, man. Kane, the the original incarnation yeah, of Kane, where, we where talked about it. All goes black, and then the big pop, mm-hmm. and then here he comes out. And along the lines of 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 the demolition, I'm going to go with the Legion of Doom because we talked about yeah. that too. <laughs> you know, back in the day, even prior to coming to the WWF. Man, you saw the silhouette of their heads and the shoulder pads and the spikes, and you heard um, Iron Man and like the, just the whole ambiance of it. That's what got me hooked on professional. That was the first, the very first wrestling match I ever saw was the was with the Road Warriors. And I'm like, I am hooked. So I, I, I was here for it for you sure. Watch some of the early entrances in the NWA when they were heels and they would come through the crowd and the crowd would just beat them to death with chairs and throw everything that wasn't nailed down at them. <laughs> right. Uh, we do have a call live on the show. Who do we have? Welcome to the Fatal yeah. Four Way. Hi, my name's Donald Holland. I'm a big Michigan independent fan. Oh, great. And I just wanted to tell you guys, I think you're doing a great job. Levi Blue turned me on to your stuff a while back in the podcast. Everything, I think you're doing a great job. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know, I think you're doing awesome. I, I, I'll I tell you, speaking on behalf of, of all these guys, we cannot t- tell you how much we appreciate you. N- number one, watching the show, listening to, to the podcast, and calling in, to, in here tonight. We certainly appreciate that. Do you have um, an, an opinion on anything that we've talked about at, at this point? A favorite point? entrance? With, yeah, your favorite entrance well, by chance? Well, uh, my favorite entrance is, when I would definitely have the Sandman's on there. I'm an ECW mark. Um, I would have the Road Warriors. The pop was crazy. Um, then I would do, to me, a lo- local one. I just think the theme song is awesome D- dta death red army oh, wow. and the number one would have to be nick gage mdk when they comes out for the gcw shows it's just like nothing else it's crazy do you uh we you heard us run down the list of independent shows that are happening in and around the area here uh, do you follow yeah. the the independent scene? Is there one promotion or one wrestler that you 
make a point to support each and every time? Well, there's quite a few. I love XICW. I've been going to it for years. I, I, to me, nothing. But Michigan, XICW is Michigan independent wrestling. BBA is an awesome guy. But I, I really love his son right now, MM3 and Tommy Vendetta. They're doing crazy good things. They're all over the world. They're in the UK. They, MM3 is going to Canada. Tommy is in Canada. They're in Tennessee tonight wrestling on IWTV. They're just all over the place. They're killing it. They're both ranked in the PWI. I know you don't like deathmatch wrestling as much, but Tommy's top 10 in the world, right? By PWI. So they're both representing Michigan really well. It's awesome, man. Uh, listen, we, we certainly appreciate you tuning in here tonight and calling in to the show. And uh, Thanks, brother. Yeah, it re- really means a lot, really. No, keep it up, guys. I, 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 I've, I've told Levi before, I think the hot tag. I love it. It's one of my favorite podcasts going. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. We, right. we are doing something right. We certainly appreciate all of the feedback, and thank you so much for, for calling in. You guys have a good night. Thank you. You, you too, brother. You too. Thank you. And just so people are aware, Levi, when I was wrestling in the independence, that was my ring name. I was the pretty boy redneck, Levi Blue. So thanks for calling in, man. Thanks for the kind words. Keep watching. Your, your, your mom watches the show, so <laughs> like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Keep sharing. You know, if you love your mom, you're going to share this stuff. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> it's not uh, often you hear the term Levi Blue turned me on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a sexy, well, no, not anymore. <laughs> Listen, back in the day, we, we could pull some pictures out of you. It would blow your mind what this guy used to look like coming out at the early part of his career. Getting, a, getting old sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, um, you know, we have a few a few more minutes here um, on on the show, and if you have an opinion, you 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 have a Mount Rushmore of your favorite professional wrestling entrances or anything that you want to ch- uh, chime in at, um, you can call in the, the number on your screen eight one zero three three one two eight two nine. What are you doing over Producer there? Producer Hollywood Q got uh, questions. Is there, a, is, is there questions? Hey, we might just have one. Let okay. me see here. Let me scroll through my list here. I mean, I thought that's what you were doing. You know, and I got it right here. Time. I got it right here. We will be back in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I got a nice little question from um, someone here in the comments, Ethan Stewart. Ethan. Ethan says. Do you think the Usos are banding back together as faces anytime soon? I feel like, it, I mean, you're kind of set, setting the, the pieces in place for that, right? I mean, we saw a, what I would think would be a, a disappointing match at WrestleMania between Jimmy and Jey Uso. Like, I had all kinds of hope for this match that that was going to be the match of the night on that particular card. Oh, yeah. And it just did not. Like, it, it missed big, big time in my view. And I'm wondering if I'm not the only one who picked up on that. And that's why we are going to start seeing kind of the reemergence or the the return of the Usos as a tag team. Bringing Tamatanga in uh, is a huge deal for the storyline, and he's not going to be the only one. Pa Two is on is on his way too. Yeah, yeah. To me, that that SmackDown segment with Solo and Tamatanga coming in—that was one of the biggest bloodline segments that did not have Roman and Rock tied to it. You know, they they weren't there, so that was like a big move. I loved every bit of it, and I believe that we are setting up. For like, almost like a NWO black and white versus a NWO. Civil war, yeah, almost. you got that civil war going. So, so we can see. I, I, I'm, I'm already like putting it together. I, I can tell. Like Solo is already saying that order of the tribal chief. I don't think it's Solo. I think Solo is taking orders from the Rock. Mm. So you have the Rock on that side. Roman comes back later. You know, Roman's f- filming a movie now, mm. so he's coming back after you know all that time and he's gonna get a pop he's gonna get a pop and he's gonna align back with the usos and we can see that 
Civil War breaking out. We talking about war games coming up. Ooh, that would be an amazing. That's what it, when they started toying with this. I was like, this is what's gonna. This is the seed that's gonna that be that's gonna be planted for war games in November. Yeah. He makes a good point, and when I was while well, he was saying it, I'm like, ooh, I need to ask Sean this. Coming out of WrestleMania, the, Roman Reigns is off the show. He's he's off. He's not he's not in WWE r- right now after losing the the Universal Championship to Cody Rhodes, and we were all watching what were what were they going to do on Raw and SmackDown immediately following that to keep the other members of the Bloodline relevant without Roman's. Uh, p- p- participation, and I'm like, when's the last time that this happened in a, s- a similar s- circumstance? I go back to WrestleMania in 98, Shawn Michaels yep. loses the WWF <clears throat> title. Yep. The very next night, you saw X-Pac make his return, yep. and then you saw the New Age Outlaws uh, c- come into the fold. We have a new DX. This is what's happening now with the bloodline, right? right? They're they're bringing in these new members. They're bringing in new talent for a new version of the storyline. Does this lead to war games? Absolutely, it does. If you if you've watched war, interviews war, with uh, war, Paul Heyman, war, war. <laughs> interviews with Paul Heyman, he was saying that there's enough storyline and the bloodline storyline that could last for years. Sure, and if you it, remember yeah. right before the IWC got so vocal. When it was going to be The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, what did The Rock say? That he wanted to eat at the head of the table. Mm-hmm. I think we're going back. I th- you know, we've seen so much going back to bring so much forward. I think that's what we're going to see is we're going to go back in time and bring it back forward to present the current storyline. So like much like you were saying, we're going to have this civil war at War Games. Wouldn't that be something that that's well, that's the tagline of it, the Samoan c- Civil War? I yeah. mean, could, could you see that play out? Are we going to play into more Marvel titles, Civil War, oh, now man. we had Endgame? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I mean, but how is Stan Lee right here. <laughs> <laughs> the, sta- <laughs> the Stan Lee it of PFC. <laughs> I, I, honestly, if this doesn't end at War Games, I'm going to be disappointed. The bloodline is shaping up to be the greatest storyline that WWE's ever produced. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot to unpack here, and you know we have to wait and see how things are going from week to week. To week. And uh, you know between now and the next time we are on the air, it is two weeks, so we're going to c- come back in here in two weeks' time, and we're going to have, I'm sure, I have no doubt, a whole nother c- crop of news to, to dive into. Uh, for all the latest news and information, we invite you to check us out over at the pfcnetwork.net, the official online or the official website. I almost said online store. The official website Coming of, soon. Uh, <laughs> of our <laughs> network. Uh, and with that, go out and be awesome to yourselves and to each other. And we'll see you next time right here on the Fatal Four Way, live war, on ONTV. War, war.